In the last video in this series, I mentioned that we only had three fonts available to us on our Atari ST. So let's do something about that. Our GDOS environment, which is NVDI, supports fonts in different types and different formats. For types, we have bitmaps and vector types, and formats, we have Speedo GDOS, PostScript Type 1, and TrueType fonts. I've covered the difference between bitmap and vector fonts before, but as a brief recap, bitmap fonts contain letters defined in a pixel grid, whereas vector fonts are defined by lines and curves. So bitmap fonts are way quicker to render, but not attractive when scaled, whereas vector fonts are slower to render, but are capable of being rendered at any resolution from screen size to printer size. While I was looking for fonts, it can be quite confusing. I mean, we're interested in GDOS fonts, but several other apps on the Atari SD came with their own font formats, like Degas Elite or Degar Elite, I can never work out which, and Calibus. Both of those apps confusingly seem to use a .fnt extension for their files, as does GDOS for bitmap fonts. So often if you try to get NVIDIA to load a .font file that's of an incorrect format, what you'll get is a crash at boot time. But to bear in mind, and luckily that if that happens, we can use xboot to boot into our games profile, and that has no GDOS loaded, so we can then go and take that font out. So how do we use a new bitmap font? Bitmap fonts live in the Gemsys folder. They're not automatically detected like other formats, and you have to add them manually to your assign.sys file to get them to be registered. Actually, before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple of file associations for QED so that instead of dragging files to the icon on the desktop, we can just double click config files and in files and get them to load automatically. So I'm going to go to the QED application. I'm going to select install application from NeoDesk. Then I'm going to associate the extensions .inf, sys, cnf, and cfg with QED. And I'm going to click install. And as always, remember to save. And if you think I go on about that a bit during this series, it's because I often forget. And then the next time I reboot, I have to do the same stuff again. And that's just annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an existing font that's on our system, which is the Geneva system file. So I'm going to add gen vsys 8, 9 and 10. Notice we don't prefix the font with an S as it's not going to be the system font. We want to keep Monaco as our system font. And because bitmap fonts are detected at boot time, let's just do a reboot. And if we go into ST Guide and open the font dialog, we'll see, there it is, Geneva. So if I select the Geneva font for ST Guide and navigate to the symbol bar dock, you'll notice two things. One, it's not very nice. It looks a bit ugly, but things line up exactly as expected with the correct labels above the correct buttons. It's a fixed width font. So NVDI came with two Speedo fonts. I think it was Baskerville and Franklin Gothic. The easiest sources for Speedo fonts are public domain disks and application installer disks. So I had a hunt around on the Delta Labs disk collection on the Atari Up to Date site. And in disk 139, I found the following. This includes two Speedo fonts in different faces. So in other words, there's two fonts, but with variations for Roman, bold, italic, etc. Now NVDI will pick up any font in BT fonts, as well as fonts that are contained in folders one level below BT fonts. So I've placed my fonts in the meaningfully named folders just to give a bit, you know, I like order in my system. So to get NVDI to pick up the newly added fonts, we can load up the control panel, open the NVDI settings, and scan the new fonts in. Now this may or may not be enough. Often this works, but if the font selector dialog has already been opened in the session, sometimes it just doesn't work with the new font. So let's just take a precautionary reboot after all these settings. So I'm gonna open up QED and check the font dialog. And there are our two new fonts, but you know, that only gives us four fonts, that's not enough. I mentioned fonts distributed with apps. Speedo GDOS, and here's a gratuitous picture of my box copy, comes with three disks of fonts. So I copied these fonts into a folder on my Mac and using a binary viewer to scan through the beginning of the file, I found out what the font names were and I partitioned the files into correctly named folders. You can thank me later for that, that was tedious. So here's my Speedo GDOS font folder and there are 13 fonts if you include Wingbats, which not very useful. So let's drop them into the BT fonts folder.
reboot and have a look at what we've got. And now we're getting somewhere. So far with all of these fonts, when it comes to things like text editing and ST guide, I really like the Monospace 821 font the best. And I'm going to use that in QED. And isn't that pretty? So previously I mentioned there were three formats supported. So we've looked at Speedo GDOS. Uh, there's PostScript Type 1, which I'm not going to look at. And then the, the other one is TrueType fonts. NVIDIA supports TrueType fonts. The best source of those fonts back in the day was to <clears throat> borrow them from Windows, shall we say. So this week saw me going down the rabbit hole of installing DOSBox, Windows 3.11, and the Microsoft TrueType font pack for Windows. Now the fonts we're looking for are in the system folder, and they can be easily accessed from the hard disk of my Mac, which is mounted on Windows as the C drive. So it's very much the same way Hitari works. I just want to point out, I almost certainly didn't open the games folder, go, ooh, solitaire and end up playing that for hours and hours and hours. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm focused, me. So again, I took those fonts and I partitioned them into folders. Let's add them to our BT fonts folder. And reboot. So opening up the font selector in ST Guide, this time we see even more fonts. Now, if you notice in the font selector, when I select Arial at the top in the little little bar, it says that it's a true type font. So let's have a look at it in action. So we'll select Arial and ah, I think that looks really nice, but it feels a little slower than the Speedo fonts. So I want to have a look at the relative performance of the different fonts. So I'm going to do a speed test. This is a tricky one to test as we don't have an actual benchmark program for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a cycle of the same actions. So I'm going to open ST guide, go to the page function overview, select one of our fonts, be it Arial, Monospace, H21 or Geneva Sys. So that's a true type font, a speedo font and a bitmap font. And then I'm going to time the page render after the dialogue closes. And what I'll do is I'll do that and I'll use the frame counter in my video editor to judge relative performance. It's not exactly scientific, but it's as good as I can get. I'm going to stop now and I'm going to do those tests and then I'll get back to you with the results. So I did a font off, a kind of a rendering drag race, if you like. And I'm going to show you the results, but blink and you'll miss the bitmap one. So let's set this up. I'm going to have three vertical panels running our tests through each. The one on the left is going to be the bitmap font. The one in the middle is going to be the Speedo GDOS font. And the one on the right is going to be the true type font. Okay, let's go. Now I tested two fonts of each type. So I did two bitmaps, two Speedo GDOS fonts, two true type fonts. So for the bitmap fonts, Monaco, the default system font, took 23 frames at 60 frames per second or 0.38 of a second to render. The Geneva system font, that took 0.66 of a second, which is 1.7 times longer than Monaco. For Speedo, I used Bits Charter, which took 2.2 seconds to render, which is 5.7 times longer than Monaco, and Dutch 801, which took 2.66 seconds and is seven times longer than Monaco. Finally, for True Type, I took the Arial font, which took five seconds to render, or 13 times what Monaco took, and Book Antica, which took 9.56 seconds, which is 24 times longer than Monaco. Caching is always potentially an issue. So I raised the size of the font cache in NVDI from 80 kilobytes to 128 kilobytes and ran the tests again. But this time I only did it for the fastest font in each category. And the performance for these tests was Monaco, which took exactly the same time. Its charter came in at 1.85 seconds, which is 84% of its previous time. And Arial came in at 4.25 seconds, which is 85% of its baseline five second performance. So I was thinking about why caching might affect things. So I looked at the page and the test page contains text in bold, italic and regular. Now for vector fonts that involves loading three different font files and Monaco only has one font file so I guess either the variants are baked into one file or generated dynamically. I, I really don't know. So finally I created an ST guide doc that had only a single font in it with no variations and I tested that. So we're ruling out everything about different font faces.
And the results were Monaco, no change. Bits Charter, 1.01 seconds, which is 46% of its original 2.2 seconds. And Aerial is 2.13 seconds, which is 42% of its baseline 5 second rendering time. So what are my takeaways here? Well, apart from the blindingly obvious fact that bitmap fonts are just faster, the number of font variations on a page does affect performance, but the relative performance of fonts is constant. So bitmap fonts trump speedo fonts and speedo fonts trump true type fonts. So why the differences between speedo and true type fonts? I think that speedo fonts have an advantage because they were designed for the machines of the ST era in the mid 80s. True type fonts were designed for early 90s level hardware. I think Windows 3.1 came out in 92 with a minimum spec of a 386. So perhaps true type fonts use more complex paths and kerning, knowing that they were going to be rendered on more powerful hardware. I mean, I can really surmise about this. If you've got any thoughts on this, please do chip in in the comments. So what we've done in this video is we've looked at fonts of different types, how we install them, where we get them and how they perform. However, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.